Did you know your heart beats over 100,000 times every single day, pumping life through a network of vessels so long they could wrap around the earth twice? Let's learn about one of the most vital system keeping you alive, the human circulatory system. All the organ systems in our body work as a team, but the human circulatory system is vital for all organ systems, acting as the body's delivery network. It supplies oxygen and nutrients to the respiratory, digestive, and muscular systems for energy and function, while transporting hormones for the endocrine system and immune cells for the immune system to regulate and protect the body. The kidneys and excretory system rely on blood to filter waste, and the nervous system depends on it for oxygen to sustain brain and nerve activity. The skeletal system gets nutrients for bone maintenance. Without the circulatory system's constant transport and waste removal, no organ system could function, making it the lifeline of human physiology. The circulatory system is also called the cardiovascular system because it points out the central roles of the heart. Cardio from Greek, meaning heart, and vascular from Latin, meaning small vessel. The term cardiovascular specifically highlights the heart's function as the pump and the network of arteries, veins, and capillaries that transport blood throughout the body, while circulatory system is a broader term that also includes blood and its components along with path of blood circulation. The overall function or purpose of the cardiovascular system is to pump blood around the body, but why? The simple answer is the delivery of oxygen, nutrients, and hormones, etc. Let's understand the paths of blood circulation in our body. There are actually two different types of circulations. Number one, pulmonary circulation. Deoxygenated blood that is relatively lacking in oxygen is pumped from the heart to the lungs where oxygen is picked up. Now, oxygenated blood returns back to the heart making a complete circle. This is pulmonary circulation. Number two, systemic circulation. This circulation transport oxygenated blood from heart to body for cellular respiration and return deoxygenated blood with more carbon dioxide back to heart. The heart must pump it back to the lungs to be exhaled through pulmonary circulation. Both the circulations continue simultaneously. The heart is the main organ of cardiovascular system that works as a pump. It is located in the chest cavity slightly to the left of the midline, behind the sternum and between the lungs. Its size is about the size of our fist. It is made up of strong special muscles called cardiac muscles. The heart consists of four chambers surrounded by muscular walls, for valves, big vessels, and a number of minor vessels to provide a path that blood takes as pulmonary or systemic circulation. The two upper chambers of heart are called atria and two lower ones called ventricles. The right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from the body, then passes it to the right ventricle, which pumps it to the lungs. The left atrium gets oxygenated blood from the lungs and sends it to the left ventricle, the strongest chamber, which pumps it out to the rest of the body. There are four valves in the heart. Two valves between upper and lower chambers ensure blood flows in one direction, preventing backflow, like one-way doors. From the right, atrium blood travels through a valve called the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it travels through another valve called the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery, which carries the deoxygenated blood to the right and left lungs where carbon dioxide will be offloaded and oxygen will be picked up. The oxygenated blood returns to the heart via pulmonary veins, bringing it to the left atrium. From the left atrium, it travels through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. From the left ventricle blood, then exits the heart through the aortic valve, which is hidden behind the pulmonary valve. Connected to the heart are the blood vessels, which come in three main types, each with unique structures according to their roles. Number one. Arteries carry blood away from the heart under high pressure. All arteries carry oxygen-rich blood except pulmonary arteries that carry deoxygenated blood from heart to lungs. They have thick, muscular, and elastic walls to handle the force and stretch with each heartbeat. Number two, veins. They bring blood back to the heart. All veins carry oxygen-poor blood back into heart except pulmonary veins that carry oxygenated blood from lungs to the heart. 
Their walls are thinner and less elastic, but they have valves to prevent blood from flowing backward, especially against gravity in your legs. Number 3. Capillaries. They are the tiny connectors between arteries and veins. They're super thin, just one cell thick, to allow easy exchange of gases, nutrients, and wastes with surrounding tissues. This is where the magic of delivery happens. Let's discuss how these types of blood vessels are linked together to make a complete pathway for blood flow. The largest artery is the aorta, coming out of the left-hand side of the heart from the left ventricle. It branches into smaller arteries shown in red color. Arteries then divide into even smaller arterioles to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the tissues of our body through porous blood vessels called capillaries, where all the exchange occurs. On the other side of capillary bed, we've got very small veins called venules. These venules come together to form veins, shown in blue color, in which blood is going back to the heart. The largest vein is inferior vena cava that carries deoxygenated blood from lower part of body into right side of heart, the right atrium. Now look at the blood flow through this pathway. From the heart blood flows into arteries, then it goes to arterioles, then it goes to capillaries, then it goes to venules, and then it goes to veins for returning back to heart. Oxygenated and deoxygenated blood remains separated in the heart, despite entering simultaneously due to its four chambers and a thick muscular wall called the septum that separates the right and left sides of heart, preventing mixing. Valves, tricuspid, pulmonary, mitral, and aortic ensure one-way flow, so oxygenated and deoxygenated blood follow distinct paths during each heartbeat. This design keeps the two types of blood isolated, maintaining efficient oxygen delivery and waste removal. Blood itself is a crucial part, made up of plasma, a yellowish liquid that's mostly water, and blood cells. There are three main types of blood cells. Red blood cells, or erythrocytes, which are disc-shaped, concave on both sides that increases its surface area and flexibility. RBC are without nucleus and packed with hemoglobin to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. They give blood its red color and make up about 44% of the blood volume. They are produced by bone marrow with an average age of 120 days. White blood cells, or leukocytes, are the body's defenders. They fight infections and come in five different varieties like neutrophils that engulf bacteria and lymphocytes for viruses by producing antibodies and killing virus-infected cells. The lifespan of WBC ranges from few hours to even years depending on their type. Platelets, or thrombocytes, are tiny fragments that help with clotting to stop bleeding when you're injured. These tiny fragments cluster together to form a plug and then a clot when a blood vessel is damaged. The average lifespan of platelets is from 7 to 12 days. Plasma makes up 55% of blood, carries these cells, along with proteins, hormones, and nutrients. What are the functions of blood? Blood carries metabolic waste products to the liver such as bilirubin for processing, and it carries urea to the kidneys to be excreted in the urine. Blood transports electrolytes, glucose, fatty acids, and it transports hormones like insulin and cortisol that allow one part of the body to send signals to another, and it carries essential components of our immune system like white blood cells and proteins such as antibodies and cytokines. So the circulation of oxygen is not the single most important function of the blood, it can only be a necessary one. The human circulatory system is a marvel, pumping life through every inch of you. Understanding it helps us appreciate how to keep it healthy with exercise, diet, and checkups. If you have more questions, drop them in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more educational videos.